That tire's been giving me hell for the last two days, y'all. But today, we're going to fix it. Welcome back to 806 Driver. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've been with us for a while, welcome back. And we'll see y'all here in a second. guys so the first thing you want to do before messing with some tires is be sure to stay hydrated yes sir stay hydrated all right guys we have some company down here so this tire was flat but still is gotta leave i went ahead and aired it up First thing you want to do, if you don't know where your leak is coming from, is go ahead and air up the tire. And I like to put about 120 pounds in them. That way, you can really have some pressure at wherever your leak's coming from. The first thing I check before I go to checking anything on the tire is the valve stem. You always want to make sure you don't have a leak around your valve stem. That can save you from having to break down the tire. We got a handy dandy pressure sprayer here. You can buy at your local Home Depot or Lowe's. Put a little bit of so uh, Dawn dish soap or whatever you prefer, dish soap, and mix it together with some water. And then spray our valve stem. I don't see anything bubbling up so no it ain't at the valve stem I did mark this tire a while ago I found a screw in it let's see right there you can see the screw head here so that is the next spot that we're going to check Look at there. Like I said, it was taking about three days for this tire to uh, to go flat. Let's lean off my lens. There it goes. I think uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only. Uh, that it has a flat uh, has a uh, has a leak but I'm gonna go ahead and spray down the rest of the tire just to be sure and to check it so uh, I got the GoPro set up up here up high I'm gonna pull it back over here and we'll catch me catch a little footage of spraying down the old tire on the GoPro let's go check it out Alright guys, I'm pretty 
confident this is our only spot where we have an issue. So let's go ahead and break down the tire. We're gonna have to uh, take the air out of it and get it off of the rim. So we'll show y'all how to do that right now. All right, so now you wanna get your valve core remover tool. I'm gonna reach in here. Take your valve core out. I'm gonna have the pressure on it. Remember, we got a 120 pounds. While we're letting that uh letting the air come out of that tire kind of talk about what's been going on today as you can see i'm dirty in hell we had the boss man's truck in the shop this morning as y'all seen from the previous video uh put that new air to air on this morning i had to do some adjusting to his clutch and to the linkage on it we got that done this morning um i put four new airbags on see that got four new ones two on this side two on the other um, we had to put a we had to put that oil pan bracket on there and this truck didn't have one so we got one and boss man actually found one at a the guy that when we had to take stuff to the big shop he had it and this actually got some button lights on it hell they work pretty cool they work pretty good i did some wiring on his lights here got them to go in um can't remember what else we did we did some more stuff to this truck this morning uh we got the unit here terry brought it in today we're gonna have to do some fab work on our exhaust you can see it broke loose right there so we're gonna park this truck for a few days until i can get to it um got a tire on this trailer that is flat that i gotta repair too still and and from the last video y'all seen and a little short i put out just a little while ago we put four brand new tires and one good use tire on this uh flat bottom trailer right here and it was on the on the full length video i just put that's uh came out before this one so y'all probably already seen it too i haven't edited it yet or uploaded it but it will be edited and uploaded before this video is edited and uploaded so we got all brand new tires uh put this good use tire on there this tire was still good and got two brand new ones here and those two tires were still in decent shape so also yesterday i put a temporary hinge on here which y'all seen in the last video uh they tore the door off while we were unloading at the oil mill the other day they raised these trailers up on the lift and they caught it on the concrete and it snapped the hinge off so had to do a little straightening up on it here up in that corner where it caught the pole but it's working fine now it's ready to roll ready to get back in the game they're going to get us some uh the right size of hinges on order and i gotta make out a work order the oil mill is uh going to pay for for that repair <clears throat> but so yeah it's been a rather busy day my plans for the rest of the day today or to uh i got to clean the inside of the rat rod out y'all it's a nasty been getting in and out these fields and dusty it's a mess so we gotta get it done i got my train horns mounted i need to uh run the airlines for it for them and i got the valve it's going to go beside the driver's seat in here i'll show y'all that later and I gotta fix a tank strap on this side. I think 
the strap has gotten loose, but the webbing that is underneath it here, it has come, it has worked its way out. So I need to loosen the strap and stretch that back out and or get some new webbing one or the other and tighten it back up before we get a hole in the tank. Sounds like the tire, we got all the air out of it. So time to break it down. I'll show y'all how we, how we break them down here. All right guys, so first thing you're gonna do, load the tire out here. You wanna break the bead on it, which it's already broke on one side here. Gonna get plenty of lubrication. Already had the tire marked where it was bad. A lot of times you can just break them with your foot, just like that. Break them with your foot, see the bead broke. I like to stand on them, spray a little more water and soap around it, lube it up. You take it, flip it over. See, the bead is already broke on this side. Take a little more soap and water. Get your tire tool. This is called a golden rod. I've really become to like these pretty good. I used to, I can do it with the, the old school way too, so don't make fun of me for using this, because I do know how to break down the tire with the real tire irons as well. This, this makes it super easy. Break it, have to break the top bead. Catch that bottom bead. Boom. There's your tire, it's off. Pull your ram on now. All right, now we need to find where our screw was. It's right here, and I can feel, I can feel it, it's just barely poking through. See how I'm gonna do this. All right guys, first thing I do here, I try to get a screwdriver, see if I can get underneath the, ah, I ain't gonna be able to hold my GoPro here and do this at the same time. I should get my, my head harness out and do it that way. All right, that don't look like it's gonna to work too easy. So what you wanna do now, Go from the inside the tire. Get you a hammer. Rotate the tire around. Find the screw. Get a hammer and try to knock that screw back through the tire a little bit. Hell, it moved easy, y'all. Set this down here where it's a little easier to see. All right. That screw, you can see it here. It came out quite a bit. So, just gonna grab it with a pair of needle nose. Can't get it with a pair of needle nose. Sometimes a bit of, a, like some, uh, Some uh, channel locks or uh, some dikes really work well. Let me get a pair of dikes. All right, get your pair of dikes here. And pair of dikes, you can usually get a hold of it a little better. Squeeze it pretty tight. Get your uh, screwdriver, put it underneath a pair of pliers, use it as a fulcrum, and pull it out just like that, like pulling teeth. So, just a no screw. I bet I got it out there while we were hauling peanuts. But, so after we got that out, now we need to go to the inside of the tire. 
All right, guys. So now you can see our hole right here. So first thing we need to do, we need to uh, clean it. Use some pre-buffer and clean it up. Here's some of the items we're going to use, guys. We got some pre-buffer. We got you got either the spray kind or you got just the liquid kind. What you do is you spray that on, put that on there first, and then I like to use the scraper and scrape it real good and clean it. Then we'll go back in and we're going to buff it out. Then after we buff it out, we'll take our patch. I'm pretty partial to a round patch, y'all. I don't care for the uh, square patches. For some reason, I have a problem making the square patches work good. And it's probably just me, but. And then, of course, we got our cement. And then, uh, I like to use a little bit of uh, bead sealer to help help uh, cover up that patch after I get done. A lot of people don't use that, but I do. So, um, So, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do, Let's do the pre-buff cleaner. it kind of cleaned up now you want to buff it and you want to buff it to the size make sure you buff it to a little bit larger than the size of the patch you're going to use and when you buff it you're going to get all these grooves out you want to you don't want to dig into it you want a, a nice uniform almost like a cloth like uh feeling to it once you get it buffed out so uh that's what we're going to do next we're going to hook up our air and we're going to buff her out We got her buffed. Kind of lay your patch down there, make sure. You can see I've got it big enough to where the, the patch will cover it off. Now I'm gonna take my pre-buff cleaner again and I'm gonna clean that up and scrape it. Alright guys, so as you can see after you after you scrape it, it gets it a nice, smooth, uniform feeling to it. So now what I usually do, I'll get some air and blow it out. Now I'll get a vacuum cleaner and vacuum out all that trash. Now you can see we got her pretty clean. A little bit of trash there still. There's her hole. Got a little bit of edge on it. Get that pulled off. Now 
but you want that to feel nice and velvet like a velvet a velvet type feeling to it next thing we got to do get our cement and we're gonna we're gonna brush on our cement You want it just a little bit bigger than what your patch is going to be and kind of keep the hole in the center. Not, you don't need a whole lot. All right. You're going to let that cement sit there and dry for a little bit. It won't take long today due to it being warm outside. And a lot of times, when it's uh, cold, I like to heat up my patch. But it's warm enough today, I don't think we're gonna need to. With the patch, go ahead and peel off the back side. Try not to touch the blue portion of the patch. Let me get it tore off here. All right, it's drying up nice. Take your patch. Lay it down on their center and push down on it. This patch is really a little big for that one, but we don't have no smaller ones. So, so after you get your patch on there, I'm gonna come over here and get your roller. And I like to go roll it really good from the center out, center out, and then I like to go across and then back this way. So take your roller. center out that kind of pushes any air that might be underneath that patch out center out and then you want to just work your way back across it several times stitch it in then you want to go the other way i'm not to put the phone down guys i can't do this one-handed but i'm gonna go back this way and then i'll get back with y'all all right so i got her stitched in We'll come back and remove your excess top layer of plastic here. And then that's what your patch will look like. After I do that, I told y'all. I like to use a little bit of this bead sealer. A lot of people don't use it. I'm not a real tire guy, so sometimes I might have a little corner that's messed up or something. And this right here will save your butt on that. So just brush it on. Then, I'll let that set for just a minute and we'll mount the tire back up and we'll check her out, see if we still got a leak. All right guys, now we're gonna mount our tire back up. Get it off the rim. Take some of that soapy water we had. Move the cage bead. Walker back on. Bottom beads on them. Gotta get the top beads in. I'm gonna grab your bar. Watch up here on the GoPro. You wanna use this curve then to get up underneath between your rim and the bead and just work that tire on. Use your foot, keep pressure on it, and just walk it around. like that. Tires on. Go 
Take the tire. Bring it over here. All right, guys, we got one of these pretty cool chucks here. It's a thread on your valve stem. If you see, it's it's threaded on the inside of here to thread right onto your valve stem without your valve core in there. So screw that on. Then you can put your air chuck right on there. And you can get a really good amount of air into it. And then if you got you a long reach valve core remover, you can put your valve core on here and put it in there and tighten it down. I don't know why this thing ain't focusing. Tighten it down. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna walk, uh, work through that. And it's gonna be noisy because I gotta start the compressor up and uh, we'll get this tire aired up. Guys, sometimes your bead won't seat just by putting air on the truck alone. So what I like to do is get a five gallon bucket, lay my tire on it, then you gotta use a cheetah. <laughs> ah, excuse me. So you take a cheetah. This is a little wore out cheetah, but it still works. Fill it up with air. filled up with air put your air chuck up Be seated, we're good to go. So now we'll let it run for a little while until I get about 100 pounds in it. Put our valve core in, air it on up to about 105, 110, and call it good. Put it back on the truck. guys we got this thing about 110 want to find where our hole was our hole was right here let's get our little water solution as you see no leak. I also like to recheck my valve stem too. Everything looks good. Let's get this puppy mounted back up.
back up make sure you put your cap back on we like to use these gators here just little extensions that way you can check them without having to take the cap off and they're they're pretty durable end caps i've used these since my oil field days good and tight one thing when you mount a tire back up on any wheel your valve stems your inside you don't see that your inside stem and your outside stem you always want to make sure you got them 180 degrees out from one another um, it's just a balance thing it's a balance thing you'd be surprised what the difference makes uh, getting those out of whack on your tire wear so but anyway we got her done I got a lot more to do here but I just wanted to make a quick little video on how to do that hope y'all enjoyed it hope you learned something um, be sure to leave a thumbs up uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and uh, you know I appreciate everybody's been watching we the channels really growing and we're really busy and I feel like I haven't been putting out a whole lot of good content lately, but hopefully it'll, it'll come together. Leave me some comments. Those module trucks, moving that cotton in. We got plenty of that to haul too, y'all. Uncle Adam's out getting after it today. Terry was out in the other truck and me and the boss man were here working most of the day trying to get everything lined up. Now, these two Ford pickups here. This white one here is about to be the 806 service truck. As soon as I find time to start working on it, we're gonna pull the bed off. I'm gonna put a flat bed on it. That way I can mount my compressor, my welder, my torch, all my tools. Um, I'm gonna end up, this, this truck here has a bad motor, bad transmission. So it's just mainly a parts truck. This one's got a good motor, good transmission. I'm gonna pull this cow catcher off the front of here, put it on there. The lights and stuff, you can see these are all jacked up. These are still good. I'm gonna pull those off and swap them over. Plus they got the chrome bezel where that one's just the plastic. Same way with the mirrors, dress it up. Probably pull the bug, bug deflector off, put it on there. Um, I'm gonna paint those wheels uh, probably black and then we're gonna get some beauty rings for them then we'll put some uh some all-terrain uh 33 inch ko2s on it and uh it's gonna make a pretty cool pretty cool service truck but i gotta just gotta find time to work on it y'all and get it get it going four-wheel drive 460 ford automatic so anyway i'm gonna leave it at that y'all pretty tired got a lot to do and uh, like we always say here, keep the shiny side up, the hammer down, and we'll catch y'all on the next. Oh yeah, one more thing before I forget. Maybe, stay hydrated. Have a great weekend, y'all. Oh, we're good, we're good and wide right here. Right there.
Yeah, come on. I'm 8.3. Five 